Yeah, I echo um, Coach Sweeney's uh, you know comments. We're very very excited uh, to get down to, to New Orleans and um, a very unique season, you know, and very unique year and bowl experience. Not being able to spend time in such a great city, uh, New Orleans, and, and the people down there. But um, Sugar Bowl, uh, what what a great bowl and so much respect for what they've done to make this work in, in a unique time. Um, same thing with, with Dabo and the Clemson Tigers. Uh, again, another year, another great season, and um, looking forward to, to putting on a great show. Um, you know, and I think that's what's great about this season is that um, there's been so many distractions and uh, different things that have happened, and uh, this gives America an opportunity to watch a game, and, and hopefully it is a great game. Uh, but it's been a fun week of preparation and looking forward to getting down to New Orleans. Thank you very much. And uh, this time we'll start with the media and we uh, ask that you make sure you unmute yourself when you're called on and uh, let us know which coach you're asking the question of. We'll start with Austin Ward with Letterman Row. Hey, Ryan, uh, this is a, a little bit of a rare opportunity for you at, to be an underdog. I wonder uh, how that strikes you, how that uh, maybe motivates you and what that would do maybe for your pregame message for the Buckeyes. Well, you know, I think when you when you get into a, a you know stage where you're playing against great competition, you know, there's going to be um, you know a lot of conversation leading up to the game, and that's what makes college football so great. Um, but I think our guys are excited to play in this game, regardless of the situation or um, you know what leads up to it. I mean, you're in the CFP and you're playing for the national championship, so um, you know I don't think you need any more motivation other than you know you're two games away from from winning the whole thing. And, um, after this such you know long journey that we've been on, this is the this is the stage we wanted to be on. So I think we're highly motivated, but I'm sure all four teams are. We'll now go to Andrea Adelson from the ACC Network. This question is for uh, Dabo. With Tony not being there, he obviously has such a good feel for calling games as they're going on how much do you think you guys will miss that um without him being there oh well, we're certainly gonna miss tony i mean he's uh does a wonderful job for us and, and always has been with me a long time but uh you know i mean we're well prepared we've got a great staff we're all part of it and uh we'll find out you ask me that after the game <laughs> Next up, we're going to go to Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Hey guys, uh, and this is for both Ryan and, uh, and Dabo. It seems like you've both sort of painted, uh, you know, I think you, you probably do this to sort of, you know, motivate your teams a little bit or, or give your teams like, you know, sort of a vision of a goal as this of sort of an unfinished business type of game. Uh, both had, you know, uh, with, with, Clemson losing in the Sugar Bowl last year and, and obviously, you know, Ohio State losing to Clemson. I wonder if you can uh, sort of talk a little bit about how that at, was used to sort of motivate the teams or sort of give the teams, a, you know, a, a vision of a goal to to pursue uh, as you're going into this game. Dabo, if you'd like to start. Well, I mean, I mean, we're, we're motivated by winning just as much as we are losing. Uh, I mean, we, we've won a national championship and that's pretty motivating. We want to go do it again. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, we lost right here last year and that's pretty motivating too. Uh, so, you know, I think that uh, every year you start over and, you know, the goal is to be the best you can be. Our goals are, are, are laid out and pretty simple, but allow us to compete at the highest level and everything goes through winning our league. Uh, that's where it starts. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're always motivated to be our best. And, and certainly we learn from our memories, uh, you know, but, you know, as I always say, we just try to keep our dreams greater than our memories. You know, whether you had a tough loss or you had a big, big win last year to finish your season. Uh, season's going in one way or the other. And you either win it all uh, if you're in a playoff like this or you get beat. And uh, or you're in a uh, bowl game and you win that bowl game and you have momentum and excitement going in your offseason, whatever it is, um, I think all those things provide motivation. Uh, and you know, that's it. Thank you, Coach, Coach, better. And Coach Day. I have a question of unfinished business. 
Yeah, you know, I think after last year's game, it was fresh in our mind and something that, you know, was used as motivation. And then as um, the quarantine kind of hit, you know, there just seemed to be more things that were front and center for, for a long period of time. Um, and then as the season went on, you know, and we were able to get the season going again, um, you know, all those goals, you know, right in front and center for us. And obviously our number one goal every year is, is to beat the school up north and then and then win the conference and then win the, the national championship. And so um, I think the biggest thing for us is just having an opportunity to tell a great story of all the adversity that this this group has overcome. And that's really, at the end of the day, what we focus on because uh, this is an amazing group. It's what they've overcome, what they've gone through. And just like a lot of schools, I mean, everyone's had their own adversity that they've gone through during the season, which has made this um, such an amazing year and inspiring for so many people. But um, I think for us, the, the highest motivating thing with that is just the fact that we'll have something to show for it in the end and be able to tell a great story of overcoming so much. Thank you, Coach. Our next question is Bill Rabinowitz from Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Ryan. Um, you've been shorthanded uh, against Michigan State and obviously against Northwestern. I know the status report won't come out till tomorrow, but can you give a, a general assessment of how close to full strength you'll be? Yeah, I mean, full strength is a, uh, is a, is a it's a, a floating target right now because you know, there's guys who, you know, come off of the quarantine and then, or excuse me, isolation, and then they have a protocol to get back onto the field. And uh, you don't just play football after not doing anything for 10 days. And so I think there's certain levels of return to play. Um, and all those guys, you know, who, who were missing there for the last month are working their way back into it. Um, so we are getting a lot of guys back, but to say a hundred percent, you know, it's, it's, it's different this year, um, but the good news is they, they are working their way back and getting stronger every day. Next question will be David Hood from TigerNet.com. Hey, Coach Sweeney, sorry, trying to get unmuted there. This is kind of the same question for you. I know we won't get that full report to tomorrow, but, you know, are you close to full strength? Is there anybody of, you know, note that maybe didn't make the trip other than Coach I think every, everybody's here except uh, I think we had two two guys uh, that didn't make the trip, uh, one walk-on and one scholarship player and um, that uh, are just unavailable. And uh, But everybody else is here, you know, even our injured guys and things like that. We'll now go to David Hale from ESPN. Hey, Dabo, you have talked a lot um, about how proud you are of your guys this year for all the challenges that they've had to overcome in getting to this point. Um, but I, I know you to be somebody who thrives from personal interaction, which has certainly been limited this year. You make your calendar out a year in advance, which uh, doesn't, I, I'm sure, work well in, in a year like this. Um, and certainly you've probably gotten more criticism this year than, than most years. How challenging has this year been for you? And, and what have you kind of learned from or how have you grown the same way that your players might have from, from some of these challenges that you've had to overcome right up to Coach Elliott being out for this important game? Yeah, I mean, we just, everybody's had to adapt. Uh, it's been a great year. I mean, it's been challenging for sure. Uh, but, you know, I always say uh, God never says oops just how I always look at it. And there's certain things we go through that we don't like, um, you know, but, you know, that's, that's how you grow. That's how we get better. And, and uh, you know, in, in, in a lot of weird ways, as challenging, challenging as it's been within our world and what we do, um, it's, it's also been a blessing. Uh, it really has. I mean, we've had, you know, it's just kind of been us. It's just been us. And uh, this group has been amazing to, to be with every single day. And, uh, you know, we, we've, we've, I'm thankful that uh, we have the type of culture here uh, that that's, you know, been awesome to see. Um, the, it's not an accident that we're here. These guys are uh, great young people, first and foremost, and we've got a bunch of great leaders. Uh, we have a wonderful staff and, uh, you know, it's just been, it's been very different. We've had to make a million adjustments and, you know, the protocols and how you meet, how you eat, how you travel, how you practice, you name it, things that you would have never thought of uh, before, but we've made it work. 
and uh, you know, and, and you go to games and some games there's nobody there. Some games there's a few people there, but we've had, um, we've, we've had, we've found a way to, to still have joy in the journey. And uh, I love that. So, you know, these guys have been great. Uh, and it, it's, it, seeing guys step up. I mean, we've started more guys this year than at any time ever. Uh, we've had all kind of guys out here, there, even dealing coaches, dealing with coaches out. And, uh, you know, everybody just continues to step up. But for me, you know, it's been a, uh, 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 a, a, a great year, you know, in a lot of ways, challenging. But again, we all grow through challenges. Uh, learned a lot, learned, learned Zoom, never heard that before. Uh, learned, learned a lot of, Learned a lot of new technology. Uh, so, you know, that's something that's probably going to carry forward with us forever. Uh, recruiting it was <laughs> very, very different. Uh, you know, we've got a couple of guys moving to campus on, on Sunday that I've never met, uh, like, like in person. So it's been unique. We've had to kind of learn our way a little bit, but, um, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Thank you very much, Coach. Our next question will be from De Doug LeMaurice from Cleveland.com. Hey, Ryan. Um, you guys have obviously worked the two tailbacks this year. You leaned on Master Teague several games early. We saw what Trey did against Northwestern. How do you think that worked out for you guys this year with the two backs? And given what Trey did against Northwestern, what could Masters' role be uh, in this game Friday? Yeah, it's been a different year uh, than last year for sure, where, you know, J.K. is kind of uh, the bell cow for us and, and handled the majority of the snaps. Um, this year it was a little bit more. It was by committee early on, and both of those guys were coming off injuries. You know, Master had his Achilles, and uh, Trey was coming off of his knee from last year. So you had two guys who um, yeah, had similar running styles, but were both coming off injuries and finding their way. And uh, when you don't have as many games to kind of get your – your uh, your rhythm of what you're doing in the run game it, it it just takes time, and when you're splitting carries it's even harder. But I think both of them um, in a short season for us have kind of found that rhythm a little bit. And I think you saw the best version of Trey, and it was great to see him because it didn't all come right right away for him. You know, he's a grad transfer that comes in expecting to just you know come in and pick up where J.K. left off, and that didn't happen for him. Um, but he kept working. I mean, he never came into my office one time and complained about carries, just kept going to work, getting better every day. And to see him run the way he did last game was awesome. So, you know, hopefully he keeps building from there. Thank you, Coach. And a reminder, any media looking to ask questions, please use the raise your hand feature, and we'll get to you as quickly as we can. Our next question will be from Lawton Swan from ClemsonSportsTalk.com. Martin, be sure to unmute, please. Hey, Coach Sweeney, uh, you mentioned C.J. Spiller working with the running backs. My, my question is really, what will the quarterback situation look like on the sidelines with Brandon up in the box, and how does that work on game days with Tony Elliott and the running backs typically? Yeah, so, you know, typically uh, myself or, or Street will rotate the backs, uh, you know, uh, when we need to, but – um, Streeter will go up where Tony was. And uh, so, you know, as far as the, the – you know, we'll have to rotate that. Spiller will handle that. Uh, do, he'll do a good job of that on the field. But um, as far as quarterbacks, you know, just like coming off the field after each series, uh, typically, you know, uh, you know, Streeter's right there. I'll huddle up with, with Trevor as well. And, uh, so just the difference is Street will be on the phone. So – you know, Trevor, go get on the phone and still have the same conversations that you would normally have, uh, just be on the phone versus, you know, right there in person. Our next question will be from Tim May with Letterman Row. Yeah, thank you very much. Ryan, you spoke uh, earlier about your uh, friendship, you and your wife's friendship with Dabo Sweeney and, and his wife. And I'm just wondering, uh, uh, with that in mind, did, do you did, did you take offense to the fact that uh, he voted you guys number eleven in the coaches poll, even though he explained his reasoning and uh, and or are you just uh, thankful he's not on the college football playoff selection committee? <laughs> well, yeah, I would say that I'm happy that that's not the case. Um, 
But I, I will say this, uh, being at the bowl game last year at the Fiesta Bowl and then having an opportunity to um, to go on a trip, um, coach's trip this this offseason um, with Dabo and his wife, uh, they were very graceful to, to Nina and I. And, and being a young, um, you know, coach and, and, and Nina trying to find her way is, um, you know, the wife of the head coach of Ohio State. Uh, there's only a few, few people in the country that, that really uh, can share the same experiences. And um, they, they've been unbelievable to us just in terms of giving advice. And it's a very highly competitive environment we live in. I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're all human. And uh, appreciated the way that, um, you know, he really gave great counsel and, and he's been uh, nothing but a pro. Next will be Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Brian, I believe you guys will be testing today and then again tomorrow. I'm wondering if, if there are PCR tests available to you in New Orleans, and is it a possible competitive uh, disadvantage for you guys? I think uh, Clemson has done testing for the week. I mean, I think that's a unique situation that um, we don't have the same protocols going into the game, but – I'm not going to spend time thinking about that. I'm, I'm tired of that. You know, it's just what it is, is, you know, as long as the guys are healthy playing in the game, that's what matters. Um, yeah, we're going to have an opportunity to PCR. We're testing this morning. And then um, if we do get a presumption, we'll have a chance to PCR before we get on the plane. Um, and then we go from there. So um, at the end of the day, what's, what's the goal? The goal is to have a clean field. And so we'll follow the protocol that's been set forth. Our next question will be Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Hey, Ryan, how important is it for you guys to c control the line of scrimmage on both sides of a ball to have a chance to win this game? It's very important. I mean, it's important for every game, but when you're playing in a, in a close game like this, it, it comes down to, to just that, you know, who's winning the line of scrimmage. It comes down to a few plays, as we learned last year. And anytime you play in a matchup game, that's, that's what you got. Um, but, but the line of scrimmage is critical, um, you know, and that goes back to any big game that's been played probably in the history of college football. So um, it's something that's being emphasized, I'm, I'm sure, on their side, and it is on ours as well. Next question is for Coach Sweeney. It's uh, coming from the online portal. Travis Etienne gets a chance to come back to New Orleans in his home state again. How, how good do you feel for him being back in Louisiana one more time? I'm happy for him. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, he's... he's Wants to finish well. Uh, what a season he's had. Unbelievable uh, what he's done this year and just his development into a, a truly complete player, a complete football player, can do it all. So, you know, great opportunity. Uh, we started the year here. We started this 2020 year right here in, in uh, New Orleans, and, and hopefully, you know, we can, uh, uh, you know, get a better result as we as we finish it. And uh, I know that's something that, that he really wants. And, uh, I know he's going to put his best foot forward to play a great game. Next, we'll go to Joey Kaufman with the Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, if you had to look back on the last uh, I don't know, seven months or so since June, what has been the biggest challenge for navigating this whole season from like a leadership perspective? I, I think in an in industry that's all about routine, uh, we've been out of routine on a daily basis. And I think that it's exhausting for a lot of people, not knowing what's coming next or having a plan and then having to constantly change it. I think that's been probably the number one thing I would say. And and then talking about since June, I mean, the fact that, um, you know, we didn't have a season, that we did have a season, we have games, we don't have games. I mean, that, that works on you. And um, not being able to, as the head coach and the leader of the program, to look people in the eye and let them know what's coming next, just that they have to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Um, I'd say that's been the biggest challenge. But the thing that I've, I've learned the most is just perspective. And that's what this is all about, you know, is that you can take anything for granted. And that, you know, although it wasn't exactly the way we wanted the season to go, um, we're still uh, very, very fortunate to be where we're at. I mean, look, we're right back where we, we, uh, we started and have an opportunity to play in this game and play for a great university, playing against a great uh, team in Clemson. And um, so as hard as it's been, uh, we still have a lot to be thankful for. Next, we'll go to Patrick Murphy from 24-7 Sports. Ryan, we talked to some of the defensive guys this week about the improvement from that Indiana performance until now, and we've only seen two games of that, but they seemed confident that 
within practice, they've they've really improved. I'm curious your perspective on on the development of the defense from that game until now. Specifically, yeah, Saquon. yeah, no, I, I think it's a great question because you know, do you, how do you really know when you when you've played six games? Uh, I think the only way you learn is by playing in games, and uh, that's that's been one of the hardest things for us as the season's gone on is we haven't had those opportunities to to, to see. Uh, but there are things that are being addressed. We have really uh, high level of talent here. So we go against each other every day and compete. And um, there's been a lot of padded practices where we've gone against each other to try to get better because we had to. Um, so I think that there's been great improvement in that area, but the ultimate test will be tomorrow. And our next question will be for Dabo. And that's also from the online portal. How do you feel that you're not seen as an underdog anymore due to your tremendous success? And, you know, we, we've been some underdogs um, along the way a couple times in these playoffs. Um, but uh, it's really just more the same. <clears throat> you know, we, we won a lot of games the last six years. And there hadn't been many of those games that we've been the underdog. Uh, there's been a few, but not many. <laughs> the great majority, we, we've uh, been expected to win the game. And so... You know, that's just the norm. You know, we, we, we prepare to win. We expect to win. And, and uh, we really don't get too distracted by, you know, um, any of the other stuff. It's really more about how we think. And, you know, we, we again, have been the so-called favorite uh, most of the time the last six, seven years. So uh, just really same focus that we always have. Next, we'll go to Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row. Ryan, when you talk about all of the uh, underdog card and all of those things that, that go into this game and, and everybody's been asking about that, is there an aspect of kind of overdoing that? And how do you balance not overdoing the underdog card and just telling you guys to go and play football? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it is. More um, to what Dabo just mentioned is that um, you know, those are people's opinions. What really matters is how we execute on the field and how we play. And that's what we focus on. And, and you know, uh, as we go out to practice, we go into meetings, we have our our preparation um, in, for the game. It's, that's what it's, that's what matters. Um, you know, people have their opinions, but uh, if you make the plays and you play well, then you're going to have a good day. Uh, if you don't, then you won't. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And so who's more prepared to play in the game, um, you know, when the foot hits the ball? And that's, that's where we spend all of our time. And uh, when you get to this point of the season, both teams, I think, are highly motivated. Uh, and that's what we focus on. Our next question is Brendan Gulick from Buckeyes Now. Hey Ryan, this question is specifically more for you than, than Dabo, but I suppose applicable either way. How do you balance uh, your emotions, either as a player or a coach, in a game where you know the, the, the stakes are so high, the adrenaline is so high, you know, you know what's in front of you, and you want your players to play with that emotional edge, um, but you don't want to do things that are you know outside of your control. How do you try to balance you know staying within your control but playing at your at your absolute max? I mean, there's going to be a certain level of uh, electricity, especially early in the game, and you know, both teams want to start fast. I mean, that's always the case. Uh, but then, as you as you get into the um, the body of the game, and um, you know, you get hit once or twice, and um, you get a little tired. I think you kind of just find the rhythm of the game, and everything slows down. So early on, you want to have um, you know a great poise about you, and not being uh, over emotional, and just kind of focus on it. But certainly, early in the game, you're going to feel the emotion. That's just part of the game, and that's. That's the exciting part of it. That's why we all do this. Dabo, any thoughts on balancing the emotions in high stakes games? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, again, the same things that won the other games, they win, they win this game. It still comes down to, you know, execution and playing with precision. You know, it's a game of emotion, but you, you don't want to be emotional. Uh, and I think, I think you lose your focus there. And uh, so uh, same things. We'll now go to Steve Hellwagon from Bucknuts Media. Yeah, for Coach Day, uh, there was a statistic put up that uh, all of Justin Fields' interceptions have come against ranked opponents. And just how important is it for him uh, to, to play his best game uh, coming off what was maybe one of his not, not, not best games, the Northwestern game, uh, just for him to kind of bounce back a little bit and, and really play his best game against a, a top opponent. Yeah, I don't think that we've, as a team, played our best game yet. I don't think that 
Um, we played our best game on offense yet. You know, we've done some good things passing. We've done some good things running, but we still haven't put it all together. Um, I'm not sure Justin has either. So I think that's the challenge, and we're going to have to play that way tomorrow. But that, that's everybody. Um, it's it's Justin. It's the line. It's the running backs. It's the receivers. Uh, and it's the entire team. Um, so, yeah, he's going to have to play well, certainly. And, um, and he knows that. And there's a couple of plays he wants back from last week. But but he's a competitor, and, um, and we have to play our best game. We'll now go to Donnie Woods from World Exposure. This message is for Dabo. Dabo, um, if you guys are able to to win the national championship, do you think this kind of puts Trevor Lawrence as the best quarterback to ever play the college game? Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of great college quarterbacks. I mean, I haven't obviously seen every college quarterback that's come through, but uh, he's as good as there's ever been. Uh, I'll let other people argue if he's the best ever, uh, but he's as good as there's ever been. That's, that's for sure. And uh, he's, he's, he's the greatest winner that I've, I've been around. I mean, he's, he's 34 and one and uh, he's, he's been incredible. We have time for one more question. We'll go to the line of Doug Le Maurice from the Columbus dispatch. Yeah, this is for Dabo. Can you just take us through a little bit of what it was like when you find out that Tony is not going to be able to be part of this game? And was it obvious what the next step was for you guys? Or how did you go through the decision-making process of how exactly you are going to handle this without such an important coach? Yeah, well, uh, 2020 has has forced all of us head coaches to have to think about things that we've never thought about before, you know, going into a season. Uh, we, we've never had a season with a where a virus can just take somebody out, um, you know, in a moment's notice. So uh, we've all had to prepare for that. So we've had a plan in place for for myself being out to you name it, uh, every single coach. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was just disappointed for Tony. I mean, uh, he... he, he works his tail off and, you know, just disappointed that he couldn't be here with us. Uh, but as far as, you know, um, thought going into it, there wasn't much thought because that, that had already been decided, uh, you know, a long time ago. So, and again, that's for every coach on our staff, uh, you know, have a plan for all of that because you have to. Uh, so just like, if, just like having a depth chart for your team, right? If you're, if Trevor's out, DJ's going in. You know, you have a depth chart. Well, I kind of had to do a depth chart for my staff on how this guy's out. You know, how would I adjust? And so uh, that that thought process had already taken place a long time ago. Uh, so, you know, that's it. Uh, and, and listen, Tony and I have always uh, collaborated and, and, and kind of done it together. Uh, he's awesome to work with. And, and uh, you know, Jeff was a part of that before he left. And and, uh, you know, Streeter has been our passing game coordinator this year and and uh, has, has been a part of that on the field. So, you know, we're just, we'll are just miss Tony. But, you know, Streeter will do a great job up top and, and uh, you know, well prepared as a staff to, you know, go play the game. Uh, just the way it is. So thank we'll, you very much. Definitely miss Tony for sure. Thank you very much, Dabo, and thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and good luck with the rest of your preparations. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. See you, Ron. Y'all travel safe. All right, Dan. Thanks, you. For the media, we'll be sending out a link to this.